Hey, what's up guys? Matt here, Acoustic Selection. Hope you're doing well. I want to quickly talk to you um, briefly um, about this putting things in perspective with this Texas um, shooting at this church recently. I've had a lot of people on Snapchat and social media ask me, how can a good God let this happen? Uh, they should hang this guy from the streets if he was alive and, and, and all these things. And I, and I always try to stop and think about you know how does jesus look at us through the gospel um the the spiritually minded mature christian should channel everything they do in life through the gospel and i want to share with you a story just to give you a perspective they can kind of put things um um put things in perspective for all of us and i thought the story would be relevant for you i remember i was helping out with the uh, the the youth and the kids at my church in virginia and there was a little boy, I think he was 10 or 11 years old. Um, I won't say his name. But he was just really, really acting up in church. I mean, just in everything, no matter what you told him, just very rebellious, would look you flat in the eye and say no. And just no matter how much I tried to um, um, discipline him or, or keep him in control, he was just very uh, physical with the other um other kids there at the church, very uh, would back talk and just had so many issues. So finally, I said, instead of taking the bus home or the van, I said, I'm taking you home. I'm taking you home, and I talk. I'm talking to your dad. And he, you could see him alive. and said, Please no, please no. I said, Nope. You haven't listened to a word I've said. I'm taking you home myself, and I'll let your dad know just how much of a disruptive person you've been to our church. So he, you could tell he's very scared, but I thought this was the right thing to do. Get the boy, take him, uh, drive about five, ten miles away. To um, he, he lived in this this trailer park area. It looked like a little bit lower income housing, and uh, I went out there. I saw his dad in the yard, and and I take this boy up there, and I said, I tell him the situation. Said you know he's been very disruptive, uh, even physically with the other kids, and it, we, we won't listen. And and I remember the dad sat there and looked at me and said. My boy's doing that. And I said, oh, yeah, and I thought you'd want to know. And I, I just came to tell you, you know, something needs to be done. We can't let this happen. And he turned and he grabbed his boy. Again, it's a 10-year-old boy. And just, wow, wow, boom, boom. And starts physically, right? I, I literally had to like jump out. What are you doing? What are you doing? He's beating this guy, not in a paddling or let me tell you a correctional way. He is physically whipping his boy. And, and the reason I tell that story, I want you to think about that young boy, the environment he grew up in. So think about the background of this young boy who I, who I took to his father, the role model he's seen, the love he's been shown, the, the, the kind of upbringing in a thousand different ways that he has versus take someone like myself one time I went to this men's fraternity in church. Now, this is a true story too. This was in Huntersville, North Carolina. And they said, I want you to make a list of three to five things looking back you would like to change about your father. That when you look back, you just say, you know what? I really wish he would have done this or this. Even if it's a small thing, just name something you wish he would have done different, been more affectionate, uh, been more appreciative taught you more, uh, been a better example, been a better father, been a better uh, husband, been a better, and I sit there and I had that pen and paper and I thought, I thought, I thought, I said, I don't have a single thing. And the guy said, no, this is a great exercise, kind of helps you get past some of your, some of maybe the demons you're holding in and things in the past, just name a few things that you, you wish your dad would have done a little bit different. I thought and thought again. I said, there's not a single thing. My dad has been faithful from church from the time I was in the womb. He has been so giving with his finances, his time, his talents, uh, his relationships. Our family has been such a leader for our home, has been such a great husband, has been such a hard worker and shown me how to work, has been such a good teacher and encourager to me, and has been such an example in the community has been such a good um fair to my brother and i and, and give us correction and direction and affection and all these things 
And still to this day, I'm 37 years old now, he's still as faithful as ever to church, to Bible study, to teaching, to discipleship, to, the list goes on and on. So I want you to stop and compare two people. Compare this boy that I told you the first story, his upbringing, and compare mine. That's why I say all the, I, I've told people all the time, no matter how many great things or good things or whatever that I do, the people go, oh man, I'm amazed that you do this, this, and this. I say, I still fall way short of what I should be because of the example that's been, been given to me. I've been blessed a thousand, thousand times over more than anyone I know. And, and I, I'm like, God, why? It, it's such a gift to God. Why would you choose me? To be, have, have such a blessing parents. I didn't choose my parents. I didn't decide this. Why would you why would you allow this situation to happen to me? And I, I, I go full circle when I see this it, this Texas sh uh, shooter. What had to be going on in his head? What had to be his background? What had to make him think to turn to violence and the guns and hurting innocent and and causing such destruction? What kind of grip and influence did Satan have over him for him to be going through that. Now, am I mourning for the victims and the families? And absolutely, and it's such tragedy. But I'm also thinking, what had to be going on in this young boy's life, either mental health, um, sickness and just past uh, physical altercations or, or exposure to certain gun things? or what, what had to go on to cause him to act this extreme? Because a true Christian not only looks in the avenue of where you've been placed at in your background, but you also look at it from that person's perspective. Because that you'll never understand when I say the ground is level at the foot of the cross. People like me, I will commit adultery every day. The Bible says if you even look upon another woman and lust after her, you committed adultery. I will lie and cheat and steal in my mind. I might not go to a store and physically take something. But I'm coveting something. I have jealousy for another. I have anger. I have resentment. All these things. And a, a holy, perfect, precious, righteous, all-knowing God still accepts me because of the price Jesus paid for me on the cross. See, when you understand the gospel, you see things through the lens of Jesus Christ and the price he paid for you. Because we were not sick to sin. We did not have an illness. The Bible says we were dead. So many people misunderstand that. They think we have some flaws that Christ comes in and kind of hones and crafts and reshapes. We were dead to God. Christ reached down and raised us from the dead that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. No man has come to the Father except by Jesus. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, have everlasting life. In the verse after verse... Uh, sorry, my video got cut off there. Uh, my, somebody called my phone there while I was talking. But my, my point being is Jesus said, In this life you will have trouble. Take heart, I've overcome the world. People say all the time, why does good things happen to bad people? I mean, why do bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people? Why does Christ, why does God allow this? If there's a real God, he wouldn't let this happen. What, what we have a tendency to do if you're not careful is you see yourself as way more righteous and holy and deserving than you are. That's the takeaway I want you to get from this. Is while you might not be going into a church doing a mass shooting, you might not be robbing a bank, but our righteousness is as filthy rags, the Bible says. Never forget that. If you compare this shoot, the Texas shooter to my life, there's this gap. You compare my life with a holy, precious, all-knowing, righteous God, there's a canyon. So why did God overlook that whole canyon of this valley that, that, and overlook all that to send Jesus to die for me is a bigger question than why would this shooter versus me have this gap and do something like that? We don't know his background. We don't know what's going on. We need to pray for those that, have the, the, that do not know Christ, that do not put Christ first, that do not see how much we need a Savior. And then be thankful every single day of any right living you do because it is by the grace of God. It is by the love God shows us and the uh, forgiveness and the grace and the mercy 
in the truth anything. The Bible says, who's righteous? None. No, not one. Not me, not you, not your pastor. None of us are righteous. Our righteousness is as filthy rags compared to God. So before we, we still go casting stones, we need to understand just how far we are from God and be more appreciative of the price Jesus Christ paid to bring us to God. That's your Wednesday word, guys. I love you so much, but God loves you. Surrender your life to Jesus. Best decision you ever made. God bless you.